From the Vault, celebrating the stories and people you remember from Central Illinois. Sponsored by Loman Ray Insurance Group, specialized home, auto, and farm insurance for Central Illinois. In 1975, new development threatened one of the oldest houses in Champaign County. But rather than lose it, some concerned citizens moved it. Here's WCIA's Stan Childress. This spot here at Leo Park in Urbana is where it will go. This vacant spot on Springfield Avenue in Urbana is where it came from. And here it comes, a Civil War era house that the Champaign County Historical Museum thought quite a bit worth saving. What is the significance, the historical significance of the house itself? This house, we believe, is the last example of Greek Revival architecture, residential architecture, in Champaign-Urbana, possibly in Champaign County. And so it's important to save historically and architecturally. Well, I think we better get going before we get run over by a house. Uh, how much is it costing the uh, museum to get the house moved? The move is costing um, $12,300, including the foundation. And uh, we have had some donated services and some grants which have helped with it. And a couple people came in at the last minute and made a loan so that we were able to raise enough money to do it. But we're still collecting money for it. Perhaps the final word to be said about this 65-ton Greek Revival cottage is that old houses don't die, they just move on. Reporting from Urbana, this is Stan Childress. Joining us now from the vault, a man who adds 40 years of television and experience, and a lot of folks at Central Illinois would recognize him as Captain Eddie. Joining us is Ed Mason. It's nice to have you, sir. Thank you, Matt, and good to be here, buddy. Tell me a little bit about Captain Eddie. They, they put a show on called Popeye Circus. Mm -hmm. And I was the ringmaster. I had the boots and I had the coat and the whistle. And uh, the show started, I'd blow the whistle and I'd say it's Popeye Circus. And I had a, a cohort, Ruffles the Clown. And he had a St. Bernard dog. And he thought it'd be a good idea to construct a cart. Chesty Potato Chips was our sponsor at the time and fill it with Chesty products then hitch that dog to that cart, and then when he made his entrance, he'd bring that dog out with the cart. Well, it was a good idea, except when he brought that dog out, mayhem developed in the studio. The kids were scared to death of that dog, and they started screaming. The dog got excited, tipped over the chesty, <laughs> chesty cart, Wally was out there trying to corral that dog, and the kids were screaming and running <laughs> all over the studio. Needless to say, that was the last time we used the dog. When he left, Ruffles left, and then I took over a thing, we, and it became uh, the little rascals. Meeting the children was, was a lot of fun, and uh, we'd interview them. We'd go down the rows and say, who would you like to talk to today, you know? And they'd say, well, Grandpa, Grandma, and... You did a lot of work behind the scenes as well, and I think we have a neat picture of you in here at a WCIA camera. Well, my heart was in production. I loved directing, producing, writing. This, this station was so neat. We had a wonderful group of people who were learning television. That was a that was the highlight of my working career, working with these people. And uh, I can name a bunch of them. Sheriff Sid was, he was on the air too. He was, he was a, uh, he wore a cowboy outfit and the, and the, and the uh, guns. Very talented guy and a wonderful person. I have a story about him. He was on his way home one day and a car passed him pretty fast and Sid had his cowboy outfit on with his pistols. And he pulled the guy over and <laughs> gave him a citizen's arrest. And we, we all thought, well, I bet you, you can't believe what that guy said when he got home. You would not believe I'd just been arrested by Sheriff Sid. You know, <laughs> he would do that kind of thing. You did not originally want to be on camera, or did you? Well, I'll tell you. I. Uh, I hadn't thought much about it, and the 6 o'clock news was sponsored by Standard Oil. And somebody uh, came to me and said, 
we need somebody to do a Atlas Tire commercial. Well, I said, I haven't tried anything like that, but I'll be glad to do it. And did the on the air for uh, Eisner Foods for many years, mm -hmm. and Pepsi Cola, and Chesty Potato Chips. In those days, commercials were live during the show, you right? You believe it, yeah. Yeah, so when, you're, when you get the cheek flutter or something goes wrong, how did you keep your composure? We would just do another take nowadays. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> well, you just have to, have to go on, you know. And it, of course, I could just see my whole face upside down, but um, obviously it didn't show that much. But it, I was rather nervous on that first one. Sure. We're talking with the one and only Ed Mason today from The Vault. And coming up, we're going to hear more about The Hop and his interview with Margaret Whiting. Stay with us.